Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with all the blue inks that I currently own. And I haven't done an, a blue ink exploration, I don't think ever. So that is what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna say that this lovely sample vial holder, and I can hold it like this and it's not gonna fall out. This is called the Cricut and it's from Fountain Pendulum. She's also the one that has sent me this one with the pen holder. There's also another one. Oh, sorry for the shaking. Also another one that looks like this and then another one with just the sample ink vial holder. So I will include her YouTube channel and her Instagram down below. What I will be swatching on today is my Galen Leather A5 notebook and this has 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. I will be using a pipette and I will be using the top of an ink sample vial to make my little circles and I will also be using my Kakimori brass nib in my River City Pen Co holder. Let's get started. Because of the way that my brain works, I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. So the first one is Birmingham Pen Co Agave, and I'm gonna place this in this lovely sample vial ink holder from Fountain Pendulum. And I'm going to grab, I have a whole jar here of pipettes, which I end up just actually washing out. Yeah, and I have so many that really I don't need to wash them between every single one, although I do, just to make it easier for next time. And then swirl it around. I'm actually really surprised that I haven't done a blue ink exploration yet because I have so many. I've surprised myself with actually how many blue inks I do own but don't use as regularly as I would like to. So Birmingham, oh, that one has a lot of ink on there. And I've just gotten all over my fingers. Birmingham, ham, gosh, pen, co, agave. Doing really well here so far. And actually, I really like this blue. And this is the thing I like about ink explorations. It reminds me what I do actually have in my collection. So that is Birmingham Pen Co. Agave. Next ink is Birmingham Pen Co. Fresh Water Bog. Tried to wash off as much as I could, but I'm sure by the end of this, I will have a ton of ink all over me. So just grabbing a dot of the ink here. And I love the method of using the sample ink file to swirl it around because then you're really able to get the different features of the shading and the shimmer. And because I use a fine or an extra fine nib most of the time, these circles allow me to show you guys what the effect would be for wider nibs since I don't write with medium or broad. But also when I use the Kakamori brass nib like I'm gonna do here I'm gonna show you the different line widths that you can get and what it looks like in those different line widths which I really really like this is a lovely blue I really should use these more so that is Birmingham Penco freshwater bog next we have Birmingham Penco heron there's really not a lot of this one left probably enough to do this ink exploration. But we will see, this one has actually been really, really pretty and I've enjoyed using this one in my pens. Birmingham Pen Co. is actually an ink brand that I discovered in 2023. And this is an ink that looks more teal than blue, but I like to be able to compare it as well. And seeing all of these side by side. Now in this particular ink journal, I don't, have all of the color families compared, but I do have another Penco Heron. I do have another ring set up where I show all of the blue color families, all of the teal, all of the green, and this one fit for me into both, even though it does look more teal, but it is so pretty. It doesn't, you're gonna see it when it's dried. It has a a little bit of sheen but not a ton and I'm not normally a big fan of sheen so that is Birmingham Penco Heron. 
Next we have Birmingham Pen Co. Molten Tin. This is the ink that is currently in my pens by Casey new pen and um, this one is hard for me to determine because sometimes it seems like it's blue or purple and then it dries to like this gray so it's a really really interesting mono or chromo shading because here it looks purple like when I'm putting it down like that it looks purple and you're probably wondering why the heck am I putting it in with all of these but when it dries it does dry a little bit more blue a little bit more gray it's really really interesting I really enjoy writing with this one and it's got really good flow as well so Birmingham Penco Molten Tin and you can already tell just by the way it's starting to dry and shade there is a little bit of like a bluish gray which is why, whoops, didn't mean to put those two together, which is why I included this because it does, it starts off purple, but it dries to this really, really pretty grayish blue. And I'll show you that once it's dried. So that is Birmingham Penco Molten Tin. Next we have Colorverse Mystic Mountain. And this was a sample that was sent to me. I really like this one because the base color is like this lovely, Kind of a light blue and it has a really really lovely shimmer don't want to put too much of that and then we'll see here the way that it shimmers is really really pretty i like that shade of blue and i'll put on that in there so colorverse and mystic mountain and making sure i can do the line widths Really, really pretty. Oh, I like that one. And I'm gonna show you again once that's dried, the really pretty shimmer in that. Next we have Diamine Bliss, and this is from the Inkvent calendar. And this one also reminds me actually, now that I look at it, very similar to Birmingham Penco Agave. I use this in December for my currently inked and it's a very pretty color, really good flow, but it does lean towards the teal family. Looks very similar though to Agave, as you guys can see there. But again, it was really fun to use. I used this in my Pilot Vanishing Point, and the two worked really well together. And you'll see in the different line widths here, there is a little bit of shading, but that's it. It's just a, I say that's it, but shading is really good quality. I like it. So that is a Diamine Bliss. Next is Diamine Celadon Cat. And this one was, I believe the, one of the Reddit inks of the year. And I'm very new to this. I think what Diamine do is uh, they do a survey in the fountain pen subreddit group and people can help decide i think the color as well as the names and this was one of them the other one was sailor's warning but i love that color i think it's really pretty but also from the time that i've used this so far it's a really well behaved ink so pretty. I really like this shade. And now that I'm comparing it to the other blues, it looks more like a lighter teal rather than a blue, but it's still really, really pretty. So that is Diamine Celadon Cat. Next we have another ink event, one from Diamine. It's Upon a Star, and this one is a chameleon ink, so it's both a sheener as well as a shimmer ink and i really really enjoyed using this in my Le bon 325 it's got it's just a fun fun color like look at that dark dark blue and then there's going to be a bit of sheen as well as the shimmer in it and i don't know how much i'll be able to pick up on 
my dip pen, but here we go. Die mine upon a star. And you can already see some of that sheen. But look at that. It's such a fun, fun ink. And that shimmer is like a green shimmer rather than a gold or silver. I really enjoy it. So that is Diamine Upon a Star. Then we have Dominant Industry Les Nymphes Les Nubages. It's a painter series. And you can see here it's got a tiny bit of shimmer at the bottom. I'm going to try and get that as much as I can. This sample was sent to me by Shazia of Alaska, Canada. And um, Shazia is so, so fun. And I'm so glad she sent these to me. So we'll see if we get a little bit of shimmer in that tiny sample. Oop, sample vial holder is so important. And swirl that around. This is also a very, very pretty blue. It's amazing how many different tones and shades you can get in blue. How different some are. Some are so cool and some are much, much warmer. So this is, and I'm going to get ink all over my fingers again. Dominant industry. Le nymphe nymph de nuage and again another really pretty blue but I think in the particular sample that I got not a lot of shimmer but that's okay still very very pretty next we have Ferrisville Press Story Blue and you're going to tell just from this particular sample how much I like this shade of blue because <laughs> I have it in this and sell it on cat is very similar you can see what I like to what attracts me in terms of the different colors I look at that that is gorgeous I do not need a full bottle of that I do not need a full bottle I have a huge sample of this so definitely do not need a full bottle but this one actually I was always a bit hesitant when it comes to Ferris wheel press inks because some can be really dry but this one actually behaved really well in my pen and the shading in this is beautiful oops I forgot to do this in previous one. But yeah, that is Ferris Wheel Press Story Blue. Next one I have is Ferris Wheel Press Dusk in Bloom. And I've had this one before and somebody sent me another sample of it, which was lovely because I forgot how much I actually liked this ink. So swirl that around. Oh, so pretty beautiful. I do like those lighter blues. I don't know what it is, but I I do like them and I do need to actually use them more. If you hear that squeaking, that's my chair. <laughs> Ferris wheel. Press. And this is Dusk in Bloom. And the shading in this is wonderful. Oh, look at that. Even in the different line widths. Very, very nice. So that is Ferris Wheel Press Dusk in Bloom. Next we have a Pannonia Amarillo ink. It is Azul Frida. And I have this in the set of three. The Pannonia Amarillo Stationery collaboration. And the three that I purchased can all be mixed together to create beautiful, beautiful inks. And this blue is punchy. I've got water on here, hold on. Lovely, lovely. It's leaning more towards like the blurple, but I think it's still a really lovely color. And 
So this is Pannonia. I'm realizing that my nail polish is also blue. <laughs> Amarillo Stationery. Make sure I don't knock anything over. And this is Azul Frida. Very pretty, like look at how bright that is. And what you'll see when you get to the broader nibs. Really punchy blue. So that's Pannonia, Pannonia Amarillo Stationery Azul Frida. Next we have Pilot Hiroshizuku Shin Kai, and this was one of the first bottles of ink that I purchased and having difficulty opening, but also one of the first blues I ever had. I had Konpeki, which was recommended by so many people as a really great blue ink, um, but again, it wasn't really for me. I prefer the blue-black of the Shinkai, actually, and look at that. Realizing how similar it is to some of the other ones that are already in here, but just even looking at all of the inks that I've swatched so far and how different some of these blues are, which is probably why I have so many. And I love Pilot inks because they are so well behaved. If you have a pen that is writing not very well with other inks, try it with a Pilot ink and see what happens. Like, look at how smoothly that comes off of the brass nib. Beautiful. So that is Pilot, ooh, Eroshizuku Shin Kai. Then we have Pilot Eroshizuku Sukio. This one was one I purchased based on carry of pens and tea. She just loves this ink so much and uses it actually when she's testing her pens. And I've now come to use this as a tester for when I get new inks as well. And I really like it. Like, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Definitely different than Shinkai. Shinkai leads a little bit darker, almost to that. You can see the blue back, but here it is definitely blue. And actually comparing it to Amadio, uh, the Azul Frida, which is now looking more blurple, this looks more blue, <laughs> if I can say that. For me, it's hard to describe the different tones and different uh, shades of blue. Gosh, there's so much ink on this nib. Suki. Yo. Oh, look at that. This is why I love doing these different line variations because it really shows off that ink. So that's Pilot Eroshizuku Sukio. Next we have Robert Oster Australis Hydra, and this one I've had actually for about a year, this sample, and I've just never used it, and I could never bring myself to get rid of it or give it away, and I think I really just need to use it. I keep asking myself, why do I still have it in my ink sample collection if I haven't used it yet? And I think it is because, like, just look at that. That is why you keep that. And that is why I haven't given it away. But I wonder why I haven't used it yet. I do need to actually use it. It's so lovely and bright and mm. and I'm run out of adjectives for how to describe these inks. But Australis Hydra is bright really lovely blue and I think would be great no matter what nib size you're using. But look at the different line widths and how it looks in the different line widths. Very, very pretty. So 
that is Robert Oster Australis Hydra. Next we have Robert Oster and it's a collaboration with Pulp Addiction. This is Blue Addiction. Now, it says it's Blue Addiction, but after using it, I don't think it's blue. It's more of a teal, turquoise type of color. And you'll see here that it really isn't blue. It's more like a darker teal, turquoise. And I apologize to anyone who can really differentiate between teal and turquoise because I cannot, unfortunately, but I do the best that I can. So Robert Oster with Pulp Addiction. And this is Blue Addiction, which is actually a really well-behaved ink. I'm currently using it in a fine nib, which most of my pens are a fine or an extra fine nib. And the color of the ink still shows up really beautifully. And there is a little bit of sheen. I really enjoy using it. And it's got great flow even in a fine nib. So that is Robert Oster, Oster Pulp Addiction, Blue Addiction. Next we have Sailor Tintarias Agave. I've had this sample for a while as well. And I, part of me, I think it's hoarding this, but also I just haven't had a pen to be able to put it in because I've had so many new samples and new inks to try. And whenever I get new inks, I always try to ink those up first and just get them sampled and out. Um, and then, oh, see? remembered why I love this. That blue grayish tone I really really love and again I need to put this in a pen soon. I need to do what Simona's doing in terms of her project ink down. Although saying that I mean I don't have as many samples as she does. Mine are still less than the hundreds. <laughs> but I do want to make sure that what I do get in actually is used but I'm also not going to buy a bottle of an ink just because I really, really enjoy it. If I just buy samples, I think I'll be okay. But look at this. This is a, such a beautiful blue-gray color. I love it. So that is Sailor Tintarias Agave. Next we have Vinta Pettigrino or Pilgrim's Blue. And I don't own too many Vinta inks. I have tried a couple and or more than a couple, about a handful of them, and I love that they are a Filipino ink company. I am Filipino. Oh gosh, ink everywhere. I am Filipino and I love being able to support Filipino businesses where I can. That is gorgeous. Ah <laughs> this is the thing about my my ink circles is that they're organic. They are never perfect and that is okay. And that's actually why I love the whole ink journal process of swatching is because everybody or every person's ink journal that I see on YouTube is different. There isn't a single ink journal out there that looks like another person's ink journal. Uh, pill Grimm's, oops, blue. And look at the shading in this. Gorgeous. I actually really like that kind of splatter that went out there. So that is Vinta Pettigrino or Pilgrim's Blue. Last but not least, we have a Wearing Ghoul Alice in Wonderland, and I'm gonna shake this up a bit because there is some shimmer down at the bottom. And once this is all swatched and dried, I'm gonna show you what these look like all together. And again, apologies for the fingers, but I mean, did you actually swatch ink if your fingers are not covered in ink? So let's swirl that around, making sure that is dry such a light blue with a really pretty gold shimmer. Now, the thing with this is, 
is that you can see how light it is. How legible is it going to be even with that shimmer? Not very. I have found that a lot of the Wearing Ghoul inks I like are very light once I actually try and get them into a pen. And that is an issue, especially with fine and extra fine nibs. But there's something about this one that still makes me want to hold on to it because it's so pretty. So I don't know, we'll see. Oops, I did not mean to do that. And I mean, in this brief writing sample, it looks legible enough. So I think that's one of the reasons why I keep it is that I think I'm going to use it. I will use it. So I'm going to wait for all of these to dry and then show you once it's all done. So there are all of the blue inks and I'm realizing that out of my whole ink collection, I probably have more blues than anything. I really do need to review, but I think I have more blues than anything. So I'll bring this up closer to you so you can see the different inks. So you've got Birmingham Penco Agave next to Freshwater Bog and Heron, which looks more teal now that I see it. So it's not really a blue. And then you've got Molten Tin, which is now really like a light purpley blue, really like that color. Then you have Colorverse Mystic Mountain, Diamine Bliss, which if you look at it, they do look very similar to Agave. And then you have Diamine Celadon Cat. I mean, just look at the chromo shading in there. You've kind of got like a gray undertone to it too. So pretty. And then Diamine Upon a Star. Can you see that sheen? and shimmer such a fun ink i had i had it in a stub nib and it was just so so fun then you have dominant industry Les Nymphes de Nuages in there you can see the tiny bit of shimmer just a tiny bit but not a lot in the writing sample then you have ferris wheel press story blue you can see how similar it does look to celadon cat this one is darker in terms of the writing sample and this one looks more gray in the writing sample whereas this one looks more blue and then to the next page, you have Ferris Wheel Press Dusk in Bloom. Again, I feel like it's almost a different version of the Story Blue, like a lighter version of it without so much gray. And then you have Pinona Amadio Stationery Azul Frida, which looks more like a blurple out of anything. I feel like that kind of looks like either, I think it looks like Ajisai, Pilot Oroshizuku Ajisai, which I no longer have a sample of. Then my two Pilot inks, Pilot Oroshizuku Shinkai and Sukio. I love that, I mean, this looks more, it is the blue black, but looks more like gray with a little bit of sheen there. But this you can tell really is the blue, almost leaning towards the dark teal turquoise, but I still really love that. Then you have Robert Oster Australis Hydra, and then the Pulp Addiction Blue Addiction. You can see how much sheen is in that, but really pretty color. And then Sailor Tintarias Agave. This looked more blue, I think when I first swatched it and I really enjoy that color and you can really see how I like that shade of blue ink. And then you have Vinta Peregrino Pilgrim's Blue, a little bit of sheen around the edges, but not as much sheen as if you remember the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was Royal Blood or Royal Blue or something like that. And I no longer have it because I gave it away because the sheen was too much, but this is a manageable amount of sheen. And then lastly, Wearing Ghoul Alice, another really light blue, but then it's got that gold shimmer. So what do you think of the current blue inks that I own? I think it tells me that I need to use them more because I have so many that I haven't used and I really want to put these in a pen. I'm the type of person where if it's in my collection and it's not being used, I feel uneasy about that. So if I have something in my collection, I do want to be able to use it and rotate between these so that, you know, if I've used something and I'm happy with it and I don't need to explore it anymore, then I'm happy to either give it, give it away. Uh, and if there's like less than maybe a couple of drops, then say that it's done. So my collection basically works like that is that I need to be using it so that I can keep it flowing keep the keep the collection fluid basically so out of all of these which one is your favorite let me know down in the comments below 
once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I really love having the chats and conversations with you guys down below because it lets me know who's watching, what you guys like in terms of my videos and what I could do to make things better or what you guys like. It really, really helps me out. Thank you all so much again and have yourselves a great day.